Today, we have the pleasure of speaking with Todd Shapiro and getting an update. Red Light Holland. Todd, how are you today? I'm well, Tracy. Uh, thanks for having me. I, I you know, it's I'm, sw- I, I'm not sweating. I just got out of the shower. This isn't my going for a wrestler look, okay? <laughs> well, that's how you prepared. I drank another yeah. cup of coffee because you've put out at least a half a dozen news releases since we spoke last a couple of weeks ago. What's going on there? Yeah, well, we're very excited over at Red Light Holland because we've named a scientific and innovation division called Scarlet Lily. Uh, Scarlet actually named after my daughter, who's nine months old, and Lily named after our president's daughter. His name is Hans Derricks. He lives in the Netherlands. And we thought that um, this is a way to show investors how serious we are about our medical our scientific and research division, uh, because not only is Red Light Holland, as you know, a recreational opportunity here where we plan a product on shelves, call it by Q4, but we also want to show the world truly that we're taking this side very seriously of trying to prove out and being a part of the process of what psilocybin can potentially do for human beings. Tracy, as you know, we're in the middle of a mental health crisis right now, um, anecdotally, I can tell you, and I have told you in the past, what psilocybin has done for me for focus, clarity, helping with anxiety. Uh, And we want to definitely create this division and grow this division to get involved with observational studies, clinical studies, and and really show the scientific community and, and maybe be a part of some intellectual property and data that we could collect down the road. So right now, Science Lily has been a big accomplishment and a great milestone for the company. And fantastic. I, I was so glad that I left that question general because you've had so many news releases. That was actually my third question because the news release release for all of you out there in Investor Intel that saw the news release titled Names, Medical and Scientific Division. That is what Todd was just talking about because I personally wanted to know how. And during this pandemic, you managed to engage our former health minister, Tony Clement, as a senior advisor to your board. You obviously have other people believing what you're doing is real. Can you comment on this? Yeah, I can comment on it. And and by the way, that came with a little bit of controversy, which I'm the first to talk about. Um, Tony is a former health minister for Canada and has had very significant positions for our Canadian government in the past. Um, Tony at the time, you know, was against sort of safe injection sites and people are wondering, well, is Tony hypocritical for now getting a part of a, of a, of a you know, company that's talking about having a psilocybin based, maybe potential medical drug one day down the road, or at least proving out the science and, and research, as I mentioned, with Scarlet Lily. And Tony is very progressive. I know Tony Listen, Tracy, I know Tony is a person first, politician second, and I believe that everyone can evolve their views in life. I believe that everyone could have said something 10, 15 years ago and maybe changed their way they're thinking today. Tony has a family. Tony has people you know, in this world that he's spoken with who suffer from anxiety and depression, et cetera. Tony's done and a ton of research and a ton of a ton of a ton of fact finding on on psilocybin and he felt it was a great fit because now while he can't necessarily lobby for us he can advise us on how to lobby he can advise us on uh, certain connections that he has his global connections quite frankly uh, how we can get in touch and, and move forward with them and the other thing just back to those safe injection sites i think it's dangerous tracy to group all drugs together heroin or intravenous drugs with psilocybin There's different properties to a lot of these drugs, and there's even studies going on right now, not with my company, but with others, where psilocybin is potentially being used to help wean people off of opioids and and intravenous drugs and stuff. So it's really interesting what the future has in store, and we're very grateful to have Tony aboard. I I, listen, I, I... Politics aside, I'm party agnostic. I'm actually a centrist. I'm, I'm right in the middle with most things, which is a tough place to be. If you're not on one side or the other, it feels like you don't fit in anywhere anymore. Uh, but as a person, I really like Tony, and I, I'm really uh, pleased for what he can help uh, it, with our company and, and with the introductions there. So it's a really exciting time for us. I have to tell you, that was an outstanding commentary. And perhaps Tony is taking a look at the rest of your advisory board. I noticed you also appointed the leading mind in medicine and machine learning fields, Dr. Joseph. How do I pronounce that? Garassi? Is that correct? Yeah, yeah it's Doc, Doc, I don't even really know. It's Dr. Joseph Garassi. <laughs> and, and, and I just call him Joe is the truth. 
Um, I've known Joe as as a family friend through my wife, actually. I met him through my wife. He was very good friends with her when she went to UFT of Commerce. And, and I've gotten to know him. Joe is one of the probably the most underrated individuals on our team, um, meaning that in a scientific community, he's one of the most respected scientists in Canada. Uh, he's the CEO of a company called Netramark, which is doing fantastic things in data learning. And he, you, you know, you t this guy's got a bigger brain than most. It's actually very hard to keep up with Dr. Joe. Um, his, he, he knows quantum computing. Uh, he's been a part of many clinical and observational trials. Um, he's, he's been a part of the process of proving out certain drugs. And he loves, he loves working for Red Light Holland and now Scarlet Lily, where he's going to really help advise and help grow uh, this side of us to really, again, prove out what we think psilocybin can do. And, and his connections already have been phenomenal for what the doors he's opened up. And, and he's a big part of our plans in the future. Well, it's clear you're attracting the largest minds. And so I want to go back to this medical and scientific division. I'm assuming he's going to be assisting you with this. Is that correct? Yeah. I mean, Joe, as well, he's just sort of an advisor. Um, I've, I've said from day one, I never want to pretend to know something that I don't know. I'm never going to be that CEO. And I don't care if people look at it as a sign of weakness, but you know what? No CEO can truly tell you everything about their company. I promise you, if you'll ask Elon Musk uh, the exact specifics on how that car got to outer space, he probably wouldn't be able to tell you the exact details. He had the vision for it to get there. Uh, and as he said in the past, he may not have a Harvard degree, but he hires people around him who do. And I'd like to think that I'm bringing people around me who have the biggest mind. So Joe will definitely help advise um, with his right time constraints because he's very focused on being the CEO of his own company as well. But, you know, we were on a call for two hours today with a, with a group in the UK is the truth. But that's how committed he is. Okay. So obviously you've got the brains, the biggest brains. Can you tell me what you're doing to attract the investment to audience? Obviously they've got to be watching you. Yeah, I think there's a lot of eyes on the stock in the company. And, and one thing I can tell you, and you know, I don't know if this is the right approach, Tracy, maybe you can help me, but I'm not about to put out fluff press releases. Um, I'm not about to just kind of promote a company that hasn't made true progress. And sometimes when you're growing a business, especially a startup and a startup with significant cash position behind us, uh, we've already announced that it's not material, it's public information. We've closed 3.8 million on top of uh, an original 4 million. Of course, we've had some expenses throughout that. So that doesn't necessarily mean that is our cash position, but I can tell you it's quite strong and we'll update the public and everybody about what it is very soon. But, you know, for us, as we're growing this company, progress takes time. And, and I can tell you my head is down and it is focused on progress, not fluff. And that's what I'm pleased to tell you. Normally I, I, I ask our CEOs what we should anticipate in the upcoming quarter, but I think what I'm gonna do instead is encourage our investor intel audience to go to your website, read the news releases just from the last five weeks alone, and then Todd, can you join us in a couple of weeks and bring us up to date in July when July happens? I'll definitely do that. And one last thing I wanna tell you is that, you know, as, as a company, I wear proudly on my head every day, Red Light Holland, um, we're, we're also branding a big name here for future expansion. We believe that psilocybin will open up, you know, on different countries, different borders. I think over time we'll see social movements, and I mentioned this to you, that will kind of uh, try to force change to make these medicines or these recreational uses available to people. Oregon, for example, has it on the vote coming up very soon to make psilocybin legal in that state, and we're going to follow that story very closely. But what I'd like to say is, while we're building this brand, it's pretty neat. Russell Peters, who's on our team, uh, just last Friday was on the Joe Rogan podcast, the Joe Rogan Experience, and he talked about our company to Joe Rogan on two different times during that podcast. That alone got multiples of millions of hits. I can't even tell you the countless amounts of emails that came in, people asking for product, which we don't have yet. As you know, we're developing it, developing it in the Netherlands. That's where we're going to be able to sell legally. And and but you know, in terms of the name getting out there, that alone is one of the most exciting things to happen to a young company. Imagine getting uh, talked about, not only just mentioned, but talked about in detail 
for for and getting into a whole long discussion about psychedelics on the number one podcast in the world. This is what Red Light Holland is bringing to the table, exposure for our investors. We have an amazing team that's going to continue to build on that. And we can't wait as we grow the business coupled with the exposure to show the world what we can do. Well, Todd, as always, it's a pleasure. Maybe next time we'll be interviewing you in the Netherlands. Thank you. Is my hair dry yet? Is my hair, is it, did it dry during this time or how do I look? <laughs> Thanks, Tracy. <laughs>